عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله تعالى فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم Dear brothers and sisters You know that there is something in the Quran school taqwa Many ayat actually talking to us about taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa Allah, usually we translate it the fear of Allah. The fear of Allah, taqwa Allah. The word taqwa and taqi and taqu, you're going to find it often repeated in the Quran. Actually, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he starts the khutbah, he will remind the people about the taqwa when he's reciting some ayat about the taqwa. Uh, from the Quran in the beginning of the khutbah. Why? Because the taqwa is the only thing that is going to lead you to the Jannah. Actually, we were reminding you a few days ago when Ramadan started of the purpose of fasting. The big aim behind fasting is achieving the taqwa. Taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون Oh you who believe fasting has been obligatory on you as it was obligatory on the nations before you so that you do what? Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a big aim that every Muslim must you know achieve in your life there are so many things to take in, into consideration, and this is our topic today. What we have to keep in mind 
so that we would take care of our taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our fear to Allah azza wa jal, our respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all included in taqwa, by the way. Our obligation in following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our obligation of staying away from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all this package that we're talking about uh, is included in taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, the taqwa, where is the taqwa? Where is the taqwa? The taqwa is related to what? To the heart. If you have a strong belief in your heart, you will have taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why your heart must be a soft heart, not a hard and tough heart. What does hard and tough uh, hard heart means? And what is a soft heart? We have to define this first. The hard and the tough heart is the one that no matter what you remind the person of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you remind him of the last day, you remind him of the Jannah, you remind him of the reward of the good deeds, the person does not care. It's like you're talking to a rock in front of you. His heart is like a rock. So imagine somebody's heart like that. No matter what you say to him, he's not willing to do anything of what you say. So that person, his heart does not receive. He has a problem with the receiver in his heart, does not receive the guidance, does not receive the advice, does not receive the iman, no matter what you do. And this is what we call in Arabic, qaswat al-qalb, the hardness of the heart. The heart is so hard. And this is what Allah Azzawajal blamed the nations before us about it. Allah blamed them about that. That they have tough hearts. No matter what their prophet tells them, they don't listen. They always disobey one time after another. And for example, Banu Israel, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us the situation about al-Baqarah, the cow, and how Musa alayhi salam took to them in a very nice way, that Allah Azza wa Jalla is commanding you, you to slaughter a cow. Then they argue, say, what kind of cow your Lord is talking about? Make dua for him. Then he make dua. Said, the cow he's talking about is not too young, not too old. So if they brought any, you know, average cow in life and slaughter it, that would do it. But they say, well, we're confused. Can you ask Allah, what color is a cow? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him, when they keep asking more, gives them, make it even more hard on them. Say, it's a yellow cow. Mostly the cows are brown or black, you know, or mix it. But to find one purely yellow or yellowish cow, is very hard, hard to find. Then, although this is a very clear thing, they could bring one like this and slaughter it, but they say, ask your Lord about more about it. We need more information about this cow. They are just making excuses. They don't want to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa more about the description of the cow. Says, you know, this cow does not work in farming the land as most of the cows or all the cows are doing at that time. And it does not work in watering the land. They have the, 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 the wheel that brings the water from uh, the sea or from the water source, and the cow has to keep spinning, spinning, and the, this you know thing is connected to wheels that bring the water. So that cow does not do any work of that at all. And this cow has no uh, marks on the body, meaning this cow is perfect, physically perfect. Then at the end, oh, we know that cow. So they brought the cow and they have to, to pay a lot of money to the owner so that they get it from him to slaughter it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the story is finished, say to the disbelievers of, you know, uh, of the nation of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that their hearts, you know, it might be, some of them might be as hard as the hearts of Bani Israel. Your hearts became so hard and so tough. It's like rocks. Or even more tough. Why? Because sometimes we see the rocks are so solid, but sometimes the rocks we become soft, unlike the hearts of those disbelievers. 
يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ Sometimes you find the rivers go through the rocks, you know, and cut the rocks to, to keep flowing. So the rocks will respond, will, you know, listen at the end and obey. But the hearts of those people are not even like that. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ Some rocks will, you know, crack, and then you find water fountain coming out of the rocks in the mountains. Happens. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Some rocks will fall down out of the khashyah of Allah. Khashyah means a fear of Allah. Like what? Like Musa alayhi salam, when he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let him see him, Allah azza wa jal said, لَن تَغَانِي you wouldn't be able to see me. ولكن انظر إلى الجبل. But look at the mountain. فإن استقر مكانه فسوف تراني. If the mountain remained in its place, you will see me. When Allah showed Himself to the mountain, the mountain exploded and became dust right in front of Musa alayhi salam. The mountain exploded and is finished out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa taala. As the Quran says, وإن منها لما يهبط من خشية الله. Some rocks and mountains fall down out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mountain, Allah showed himself to the mountain, it, it exploded and went down to the ground, all of it. And Musa just for reaction, seeing the mountain like this, he fainted. He became unconscious. Musa He was shocked and he, he lost his consciousness out of seeing the mountain. So if the rocks are like that, why some humans are even more tough, their hearts more tough than the rocks and the, than the mountains. So the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something good, something positive. We need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you fear Allah, you will follow the commands of Allah. When you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be aware not to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the, the full fear must be from the humans only to Allah Azza wa We should not fear anybody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, we have the natural human fear, which is when you see a snake, you get afraid. When you see that the fire is coming closer to you, you get, you know, afraid. That's fine. This is not what we're talking about, but we're talking the, about the fear and the respect that only should be given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you give it to somebody else, that is kind of shirk in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to be careful about that. Do not be afraid of somebody and give somebody respect that you only should give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blamed some people for doing this. Alam tara ila alladheena qila lahum kuffu aydiyakum wa aqeenu salata wa atu zakah. Don't you see about those people that Allah said you know, do not fight, but just pray and, you know, uh, give zakat. But the moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made fighting obligatory on them, Allah is talking about Bani Israel also. You find some people, some of them, they fear the people as much as they fear Allah or even more. Do you think they are right when they do that? Of course not. Who would fear people and you know, uh, put in his mind to respect them more than he fears Allah and respects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you put the fear of the people more than the fear of Allah, you're wrong about your own calculations. You do not know your religion well. So this is also something we have to keep in mind. Also, you should know that the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be with you all the time. You fear Allah azza wa all the time, especially when you are, you know, covered with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all, you know, Allah azza wa overwhelmed us with the, his blessings subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you try to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is it 100, 200, 1000? Wa in Allahi la tuhsuha. If you try to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you wouldn't be able to do so. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he addressed and talked to Banu Israel, when he addressed them and talked to them, he says, Ya Bani Israel, O oh, children of Israel, remember my blessings that I favored you with, and fear me. So every time you see the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you get from Allah, then that makes you not 
to just be deceived by the welfare and the good life you live. No, actually, that makes you think back and say, who gave me and bestowed me on me all these blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that brings you back to more fear and more respect and more ibadah and taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this respect, قُلْ مَنْ يَرُزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Say to them, who's the one who provides you from the heavens and the earth? وَمَنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَرْصَارِ And who's the one? أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَرْصَارِ And who's the one who gave you the hearing and the, the sight? وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ Who's the one who gets the dead out of their life and the, the people who are alive are out of the people who are dead? Who's the one who makes that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end, they say the people has to confess. The only one who can do this, Allah. فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهِ They will say to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Say to them, so why don't you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If Allah is the one, is, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives you life, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who takes life from you, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who provides for you from the heavens and the earth, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives you the blessings of hearing and, uh, and uh, sighting and all the other blessings in your body, so why don't you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So every time we see the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must keep thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and respecting and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminds us that he's the only one true God. That's also another reason that you fear him subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ لَا تَتَّخِذُوا إِلَهَيْنِ اثْنَيْنِ Allah said, do not take two gods. إِنَّمَا هُوَ إِلَهٌ وَاحِدٌ it's only one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِيَّايَ فَرْهَبُونَ So, fear me alone. That's why, when you look at the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are the people who fear Allah the most? Just think about it. The people who know more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The... The more belief you have in your heart, and the more knowledge you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Innama, Innama means they are the only ones. That's uslub qasr wa hasr. Innama al mu'minun al ladina idha dhukir Allah wajilat qulubuhum. The believers are the ones that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, just the mention of the name of Allah will make their hearts afraid and the fear of their hearts show just listening to the name of Allah. When the ayat of Allah is being recited to them, it increases them in belief. And they depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about himself, He's the one worthy of fear and he's the one worthy of forgiveness. He's the one to be feared. And he's the one that you respect and expect from him the forgiveness. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, what we are going to get when we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do you expect? When you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you expect? Do you expect only the reward in the afterlife, in the akhirah? Or do you expect some reward in this dunya? We expect both. By the way, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards the believers, don't think that Allah is going to give us only the reward in Jannah. No, actually you are being rewarded in the dunya also. Partially? Yes, partially. Not completely because the complete and the highest reward you're going to get in the Jannah, inshallah, which is being into Jannah and being in the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the bliss, the paradise of bliss. But you are partially rewarded in the dunya. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَعَلَّمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Fear Allah and know that Allah is with those who fear Him, with them. If Allah is with you, with you and He's taking care of all your matters, would you worry about anything? Of course or not. That is the thing, that's a reward from Allah. That you know that Allah is on your own side. 
when you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهِ If you want to be so knowledgeable, if you want to do good in your study, in your school, then fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay away from the sin and the bad deeds. That's the best way so that you have a sharp memory. That's the best way that you get smart. This is the best way that you do good in the school. Stay away from the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, the haram things, all of them. If you do that, I guarantee you that your academic level will be much, much more better. Stay away from everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ فِيرَ اللَّهِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهِ And Allah will teach you. So if you want Allah to give you the knowledge, have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, when you have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you feel safe. Whether in this world or in the akhirah, the safety in this world, you don't have the worries that the people have all the time. You, you find a lot of people, especially the people who have weak iman, very low iman, and the people who are not Muslims or kuffar, all the time they're worried. Also, they have everything, but they're worried of the future. They're worried of what's going to come tomorrow. They're worried to lose everything they have. But the believer, the strong believer, he wouldn't worry. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنِ اتَّقَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Those who fear Allah and do good, they, there is no fear on them. And they, should, they will not be saddened. They will not feel sad for, for whatever loss they, they lose. Also, the people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the good news of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُخْبِتِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Give good news, Allah is saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give good news to the people who humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those that when the name of Allah azawajal is mentioned, their hearts get afraid and their hearts are in fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُنَجِّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ بِمَفَازَتِهِمْ لَا يَمَسُّهُمُ السُّوءُ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save those who fear him and they will, they will get through all the hardships and at the end, they, nothing bad will harm them and they will not be saddened. And also when you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your own sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيَّآتِهِ وَيُعْظِمْ لَهُ أَجْرًا Those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will, you know, erase their sins and He will make the reward greater. So if you want to get higher levels in Jannah, if you want to get more hasanat, if you want Allah azza wa jalla to maximize the reward for you, have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're going to end inshallah azza wa with this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقِيلَ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ مَاذَا أَنزَلَ رَبُّكُمْ قَالُوا خَيْرًا It has been said to those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, muttaqeen. What has your Lord, you know, uh, sent down to you? The teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, what, what you have received from Allah. They say, khayra, good, all the good. We didn't receive anything but all the good things. What is it? لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا For those who do good in this dunya, they will good, get good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَدَاهُ الْآخِرَةِ خَيْرٍ Indeed, the afterlife is much better. وَلَنِعْمَ دَارُ الْمُتَّقِينَ How good is this, a, is this place, this resting place, for المتقين, for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا. الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Dear brothers, to summarize what we said, we must fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not think that when you sit by yourself and lock your door, Allah is not watching you. Allah watches you. Wherever you are, Allah is with you. Allah sees what you're doing. So if you are a strong believer, you will keep this in mind and you will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Actually, Ramadan is a training month for our souls and for our hearts to fear Allah Azza wa more, to prevent ourselves from doing anything haram. Because I told you before, a lot of people ask me the question, if the person cursed in Ramadan, if the person lied in Ramadan, if the person said this or this or that, does this break the fast? I say to them, technically, the fasting is going on. Like you didn't eat, you didn't drink, you know, so your fasting is, is going on. But the Prophet وسلم, also told us that the person who's fasting, but he's backbiting and he's lying and saying haram stuff, Allah is not in need to his fasting. This person had, has made himself hungry for nothing. Yes, he has done the fasting, but will he get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the fasting if he's not changing his bad habits, if he's not stopping the haram things he used to do? Fasting is not just about stopping yourself from eating and drinking. This is one of it. Yes, because you have to train yourself, you know, to this little bit sufferings. You have to train yourself to that so that you can have self-control. That's part of it. But it's not everything. You have to train yourself also to stay away from all the things that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do not say a word that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do not do anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does it make sense that you're fasting and you're cursing using the, you know, all the bad words the whole daytime? Of course not. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't go along with the fasting and you know it. So why we keep asking this question if we know the answer? This is a time of the change. If you do not change yourself for Ramadan, then you miss the big opportunity and a big shot to do it. You're suffering during the whole year to fight against yourself, to make yourself a better Muslim. This is a time, this is a chance. So I advise myself and all my brothers and sisters to change in Ramadan, to change for the best. I advise myself and all my brothers and sisters to have the fear of Allah in our heart. I advise myself and all my brothers and sisters to question ourselves. I wouldn't say every day, but as much as you can. Say between you and yourself. Give some time for it. You know, yesterday, I give myself like five minutes. I say, let me question myself it's about, you know, some things I have done recently. Then I give myself a question before I start the questioning, which is, Am I going to question myself from the beginning of Ramadan till now or from the, the past two months or for the past year? So when I said to myself, five minutes is not enough for the past year or for the past two months, from the beginning of Ramadan till now, you know, it makes sense, more sense, 10 days. Then I started to say, did I have a plan before Ramadan? Yes or no? Then I started to see what was my plan. Did I do it? Did I did part of it? Most of it? Am I missing anything? Was there something good I was doing in the last Ramadan that I missed this Ramadan? I found something that I missed. And inshallah, I'll try to do it before it's too late. You know. So you keep asking yourself these questions. If you don't do that, if you do not evaluate yourself in Ramadan and during the whole year and during your life, don't just live your life like this. Keep going with the life. Wherever it boots you, you are. No, you have to evaluate your ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your fear to Allah, your respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ghafir lana dhunubana, wa kafir anna sayyatina, wa aslih lana ahwalana. Allahumma la tada' lana fi hadha al-yawm al-azim dhanban illa ghafirtah, wa la daynan illa qadaytah, wa la hajatan min hawaij al-dunya wal-akhirati illa qadaytah, wa yassartah ya Rabb al-alameen. Allahumma ja'al al-Qur'an al-Kareem rabi'a kulubina, وذهابه مؤمنا وامومنا واجعله يا ربنا حجة لنا لا علينا واجعله شفيعا لنا يوم القيامة اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا اللهم تقبل منا الصيام والقيام تقبل منا الصيام والقيام وتقبل منا تلاوة القرآن اللهم تقبل منا تلاوة القرآن اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدم اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدم اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين اللهم أذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين أجمعين اللهم ارحم أخانا 
أحمد قاسم واغفر له وارحمه يا رب العالمين اللهم أسكنه الفردوس الأعلى من الجنة اللهم أسكنه الفردوس الأعلى من الجنة واربط على قلب والديه يا رب العالمين وارزقهم الصبر والثبات من عندك يا رب العالمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح وقد قامت الصلاة وقد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر